A capacitor is a passive two-terminal electrical component that stores electric energy in an electric field. The forms, styles, and materials of practical capacitors vary widely, but all contain at least two electrical conductors separated by an insulating layer. Capacitors are widely used as parts of electrical circuits in many common electrical devices. Capacitors, together with resistors, inductors, and memristors, belong to the group of passive components used in electronic equipment. Although, in absolute figures, the most common capacitors are integrated capacitors. This article is concentrated on the various styles of capacitors as discrete components. Small capacitors are used in electronic devices to couple signals between stages of amplifiers, as components of electric filters and tuned circuits, or as parts of power supply systems to smooth rectified current. Larger capacitors are used for energy storage in such applications as strobe lights, as parts of some types of electric motors, or for power factor correction in AC power distribution systems. Standard capacitors have a fixed value of capacitance, but adjustable capacitors are frequently used in tuned circuits. Different types are used depending on required capacitance, working voltage, current handling capacity, and other properties. General Remarks Capacitors are a good example of the fact that even the simplest device can become complicated given 250 years of evolution. Theory of conventional construction in a conventional capacitor The electric energy is stored statically by charge separation, typically electrons, in an electric field between two electrode plates. The amount of charge stored per unit voltage is essentially a function of the size of the plates, the plate material's properties, the properties of the dielectric material placed between the plates, and the separation distance. The potential between the plates is limited by the properties of the dielectric material and the separation distance. Nearly all conventional industrial capacitors accept some special styles such as feed-through capacitors are constructed as plate capacitors, even if their electrodes and the dielectric between are wound or rolled. The capacitance formula for plate capacitors is the capacitance C increases with the area A of the plates and with the permittivity epsilon of the dielectric material and decreases with the plate separation distance D. The capacitance is therefore greatest in devices made from materials with a high permittivity, large plate area, and small distance between plates. Theory of electrochemical construction Another type, the electrochemical capacitor, makes use of two other storage principles to store electric energy. In contrast to ceramic, film, and electrolytic capacitors, supercapacitors or ultracapacitors do not have a conventional dielectric. The capacitance value of an electrochemical capacitor is determined by two high-capacity storage principles. These principles are electrochemical storage achieved by a Faradaic electron charge transfer by specifically adsorbed shade ions with redox reactions. Unlike batteries, in these reactions, the ions simply cling to the atomic structure of an electrode without making or breaking chemical bonds, and no or negligibly small chemical modifications are involved in charge, discharge. The ratio of the storage resulting from each principle can vary greatly, depending on electrode design and electrolyte composition. Pseudocapacitance can increase the capacitance value by as much as an order of magnitude over that of the double layer by itself. Common capacitors and the names capacitors are divided into two mechanical groups. Fixed capacitors with fixed capacitance values and variable capacitors with variable or adjustable capacitance values. The most important group is the fixed capacitors. Many got their names from the dielectric. For a systematic classification these characteristics can't be used, because one of the oldest, the electrolytic capacitor, is named instead by its cathode construction. So the most used names are simply historical. The most common kinds of capacitors are, ceramic capacitors have a ceramic dielectric, 
Film and paper capacitors are named for their dielectrics. Aluminum, tantalum and niobium electrolytic capacitors are named after the material used as the anode and the construction of the cathode. Polymer capacitors are aluminum, tantalum or niobium electrolytic capacitors with conductive polymer as electrolyte. Supercapacitor is the family name for double-layer capacitors were named for the physical phenomenon of the Helmholtz double-layer pseudocapacitors were named for their ability to store electric energy electrochemically with reversible Faradayic charge transfer hybrid capacitors combine double-layer and pseudocapacitors to increase power density. Silver mica, glass, silicon, air gap and vacuum capacitors are named for their dielectric. In addition to the above shown capacitor types, which derive their name from historical development, there are many individual capacitors that have been named based on their application. They include power capacitors, motor capacitors, DC link capacitors, suppression capacitors, audio crossover capacitors, lighting ballast capacitors, snubber capacitors, coupling, decoupling or bypassing capacitors. Often, more than one capacitor family is employed for these applications, e.g., interference suppression can use ceramic capacitors or film capacitors. Other kinds of capacitors are discussed in the hashtag special capacitors section. Dielectrics The most common dielectrics are ceramics, plastic films, oxide layer on metal, natural materials like mica, glass, paper, air, vacuum. All of them store their electrical charge statically within an electric field between two electrodes. Beneath this conventional capacitors a family of electrochemical capacitors called supercapacitors was developed. Supercapacitors don't have a conventional dielectric. They store their electrical charge statically in Helmholtz double layers and Faradayically at the surface of electrodes with static double layer capacitance in a double layer capacitor and with pseudocapacitance in a pseudocapacitor, or with both storage principles together in hybrid capacitors. The most important material parameters of the different dielectrics used in the APPR Helmholtz layer thickness are given in the table below. The capacitor's plate area can be adapted to the wanted capacitance value. The permittivity and the dielectric thickness are the determining parameter for capacitors. Ease of processing is also crucial. Thin, mechanically flexible sheets can be wrapped or stacked easily, yielding large designs with high capacitance values. Razor-thin metallized sintered ceramic layers covered with metallized electrodes however, offer the best conditions for the miniaturization of circuits with SMD styles. A short view to the figures in the table above gives the explanation for some simple facts. Supercapacitors have the highest capacitance density because of its special charge storage principles. Electrolytic capacitors have lesser capacitance density than supercapacitors but the highest capacitance density of conventional capacitors because it's thin dielectric. Ceramic capacitors class 2 have much higher capacitance values in a given case than class 1 capacitors because of their much higher permittivity. Film capacitors with their different plastic film material do have a small spread in the dimensions for a given capacitance voltage value of a film capacitor because the minimum dielectric film thickness differs between the different film materials. Capacitance in voltage range capacitance ranges from picofarad to more than hundreds of farad. Voltage ratings can reach 100 kV. In general, capacitance in voltage correlates with physical size and cost. Miniaturization as in other areas of electronics, volumetric efficiency measures the performance of electronic function per unit volume. For capacitors, the volumetric efficiency is measured with the CV product, calculated by multiplying the capacitance by the maximum voltage rating, divided by the volume. From 1970 to 2005, volumetric efficiencies have improved dramatically. Miniaturizing of capacitors. Stack paper capacitor from 1923 for noise decoupling in telegraph lines. 
Wound metallized paper capacitor from the early 1930s in hard paper case. Capacitance value specified in CM in the CGS system, 5000 cm corresponds to 28 nanofarads. Folded wet aluminum electrolytic capacitor, Bell System 1929, view onto the folded anode, which was mounted in a squared housing filled with liquid electrolyte. 28 microfarads, 525 V wound wet aluminum electrolytic capacitors in paper housing sealed with tar out of a 1930s radio. Overlapping range of applications These individual capacitors can perform their application independent of their affiliation to an above shown capacitor type so that an overlapping range of applications between the different capacitor types exist.